Hello guys, we are now almost on our fourth month into 2018, and there have been a few stories worth mentioning that relate to Borderlands 3. This video will be a follow up from my previous Borderlands 3 Everything We Knew Up to 2018 video, so if you haven't watched that yet, I will link it down below in the description, so be sure to check that out and then come back to this one. But this video will cover all the Borderlands stories from January to the end of March, and also all the sources will be down in the description below, so be sure to check out all the full articles if you want more information. Also, make sure to sub to this channel and follow me on Twitter at HaterHype, and turn on the bell on YouTube because lately YouTube has been having a lot of problems with pushing videos to sub boxes, so just make sure you know and are notified when my videos are posted. So with that, let's get right into it. So number one, we have to talk about the flamethrower news. So we have to touch on it because the Borderlands 3 flamethrower news kind of blew up and even into the mainstream a little bit ago earlier this year. So it all started with Elon Musk who sold a flamethrower for $500 from his properly named Boring Company. The story was first picked up by many news organizations and was even seen by Gearbox Software CEO Randy Pitchford who tweeted to Elon Musk and the conversation kind of built up on Borderlands 3. So Elon Musk first said, quote, but wait, there's more. The flamethrower is sentient. Its safe word is cryptocurrency and it comes with a free blockchain. Randy Pitchford was quick to respond saying, quote, Elon, I'm going to add this into our next Borderlands game. Super serious. Let me know if you want to write the flavor text. We'll just lift it from one of your tweets. Then Elon responds, sure. Randy Pitchford then goes a step further and says, done. This whole exchange does a couple of things. Once again, it mentions that Borderlands 3 is still in development and is happening. And also that we will get a flamethrower type weapon. I think this will probably act similar to the way that lasers worked in the pre-sequel as a point of reference. But with the new game engine, they could completely revamp the look and make it look however they really wanted. And the flavor text, if you don't know, is a reference to the red text special weapons in the Borderlands series have. So Gearbox might just take one of Elon's tweets as the red text, or Gearbox actually might get him to say a specific quote just for the weapon. And I'll link the source down to their whole thread of tweets down below if you want to check it out and retweet and share them. Second, on the topic of Elon, let's talk about another Randy Pitchford tweet. So to understand this tweet, we need a little bit of context, which actually has to do with Elon Musk again, who's the CEO of SpaceX. This year, they launched a rocket named the Falcon Heavy, and within the rocket, Musk sent up one of his Tesla Roadsters. It was just a nice way, in the rockets, they have to have some sort of weight limit, so a lot of times it's just like cement blocks, steel blocks, something like that. But he decided, why not just send up my car? And we were actually given pictures of the car up in space with the Starman driver with the Earth in the background. So it almost looks like selfies and pictures of that. I'll show the original picture on screen just for a little bit of context. And in response to this, Randy Pitchford tweeted, quote, Road trip to Promethea, hashtag Borderlands, hashtag Starman, hashtag Mayhem. Which has got to be Borderlands 3. He could have easily said Pandora, but he didn't. Also, including the Borderlands hashtag is a dead giveaway. Promethea, for you guys that don't know, is most likely going to be the main planet for Borderlands 3, and it was the planet Atlas first found the Iridian technology on, and the vault, and everything to do with that. And Gearbox has even been hinting at this back when they made Battleborn, and I already made a video breaking down everything we know about Promethea, including all references, so go check out that if you want any more information about this planet and everything we know from Borderlands 1 up to now. I'll link that video down below along with Randy Pitchford's tweet, basically confirming that Promethea is going to be the planet. So now let's talk about the Borderlands 3 release date update. My old video on the topic still stands as in the accuracy of the release date for Borderlands 3 being fiscal 2019. But the recent news might have even strengthened it even more. So I'll link to my original video if you haven't seen that, explaining 2K, their fiscal year, what kind of time frame we're looking at. But it's basically end of 2018 up to March 
of 2019 is when we could see it. But this news comes from Red Dead Redemption 2 being delayed again from spring of 2018 to October of 2018. This might not sound like that big of a jump, but we know that Take-Two previously said that they will have record net bookings in fiscal 2019 in response to a highly anticipated new title from one of 2K's biggest franchises. So we are going to get some expansive game. We just don't know what. Gearbox has been working on Borderlands 3 for quite a while now. So we could see something of a surprise release similar to Borderlands the pre-sequel which was announced and then a few months later it was available for sale and release. I'll link the Take 2 article down below and my original release date video if you guys haven't seen that to check out and just get the full context. This next story most of you guys have probably seen, the headline probably read, No more duping in Borderlands 3 or something along those lines. Duping, for those of you guys that don't know, is a system in the Borderlands series which allows players to basically trick the game into copying a gun so each player can have one of this special weapon or legendary weapon if they're playing with friends. So if a legendary drops, if you guys have played the series you know that it only drops one weapon for everyone in the party so if everyone wants the Norfleet or a Herald they have to dupe it so everyone can get it when they leave the game. Which makes sense, the community really grabbed onto the idea and really like it. But the original story has to do with a Gearbox case study, which they wanted to promote their games being more cloud centric, which they said will allow Gearbox to patch the game on the fly without going through PlayStation Networks or Xbox Live, which takes a lot of time and is very costly for the company. We've seen this in practice a little bit, in the life cycle of Borderlands 2 with the loot hunt, Gearbox was able to change weapon drops on the fly along with increasing drop rates themselves, and all it required was that the console would be reset thanks to Gearbox Shift software, which leads back to weapon duping because keeping the player data on servers would prevent the players from tricking the game into copying weapons. Instead of being kept on the consoles, all the player and character information, it'd be kept on the server, which could allow Gearbox to patch, but would also make sure that you can't just keep copying weapons. Not only that, but it would also hurt quest reward farming and finding that specific weapon that you might want. Like many players used to find a perfect Fibber or Sandhawk in Borderlands 2. So obviously there's been a lot of ideas and comments and creators coming at this from a lot of different angles. But let me know what you guys think down below. Is the community overreacting? Should we be worried? Or is it worth getting these quick patches and updates and maybe even higher drop rates more often in place of being able to dupe and quest farm weapons? I don't know. I'm also gonna link Morning After Kill's video on the topic down below. He goes into some different detail and it's definitely worth a watch for a different opinion. The source will be down below if you want to read the article and then Morning After Kill's video will be right below that. The next story we have to talk about is the lead concept artist for Borderlands 3, Lauren Wood, responded to a fan asking them a question on Instagram. Lauren Wood left the company late last year and I'll link to my earlier video on that topic as well where he left and it didn't make too big a news. He said most of his work was finished and he basically just wanted to move on to different things with the company. But after he left the company, he added a new tab to his website titled Borderlands 3 coming soon. In response to that, a fan actually asked him on Instagram, quote, when is your Borderlands 3 section releasing? To which Lauren responded saying, quote, can't say, Gearbox is still working on it most likely next year. Which almost confirms that the Take 2 title is going to be released in fiscal 2019, especially if the concept art's coming out as well. I did a full video on this idea of the concept art and all the news behind that, so if you want to hear my full thoughts, check that out down below. Also in response to this, Lauren Wood removed the Borderlands 3 section from his website, but you can still see that there's a listed that he worked on Borderlands 3 under his resume page. I'll link that, the Instagram post, and my video down below. So there'll be a lot of sources for the concept art. Let me know what you guys think. Is this important that concept art will be releasing in 2019 most likely, or is it just he doesn't know, he's out of the loop? 
let me know. Another story that has blown up at the time of writing this is a website called Skewed and Reviewed sent a tweet to Scott P, who's the director of communications at 2K, which is the company that publishes the Borderlands series. The website asked, quote, how have you been? Have not heard from you in ages. Scott then responded saying, quote, doing well, Gareth, just busy behind the scenes working on the next Borderlands. How are things with you? The website then responded saying, okay to use that with of course name and ID out. And Scott replies, use what? That I'm working on the next game? Sure, but it's not exactly a secret that there's another one coming. Randy confirmed that a while ago, smiley face. And even in Scott's bio, it says currently working on the next Borderlands franchise. Even though the game hasn't been confirmed by the studio yet, it's reassuring to see more and more stories coming out of people hard at work on the game and able to talk about it and freely talking about it, not as restrictive as we've seen in the past. Overall, there's not too much else to say about it other than it makes for a great headline. 2K now confirms Borderlands 3. It's really great, and a lot of the community is kind of feeling it, liking it. So, with the Nintendo Switch becoming a sleeper hit, with a lot of developers porting their games to Nintendo's newest console, one Borderlands fan went and asked Borderlands spokesperson Randy Pitchford, quote, Randy, what's your take on the hashtag Nintendo Switch running at Unreal Engine 4? Randy responds saying, quote, we have Borderlands the pre-sequel on Nvidia Shield, so why not? The fan goes on to say again, quote, Why not, you ask? Because my Switch purchase is contingent on if it will play at Borderlands 3. No pressure. Randy sadly says, quote, I do not see that as happening. We were talking to Nintendo, but that stopped for some reason. They have other priorities. So, I know that doesn't sound great for all the Switch owners, but at least Gearbox has had some conversations with Nintendo. Borderlands 3 hasn't even been announced yet, so there is always the possibility that maybe post-launch, if the game is popular enough and Gearbox can dedicate some resources or find a company to port it, that they could see a Switch port. Conversations with Nintendo I would say is good enough at this point. If Nintendo wants the game, they'll ask for it. If not, there's not too much Gearbox can do. They're not going to put resources towards something that doesn't want their game. But it would be awesome to have a portable Borderlands 3. So I'll link the tweet thread and a write up by friend of the channel Mental Mars on the topic. So be sure to check those two out. So another story we have to talk about is Borderlands 3 at E3. As mentioned earlier in this video, the common belief is that Borderlands 3 will be coming out sometime in the next year. 2K and Gearbox will most likely have to go public at some point with the game at most likely a big conference to stir up hype. There have been a few options Gearbox could go to. E3, definitely people have been saying more and more that maybe this is well, where we will see it. And it is one of the bigger conventions. But I do want to mention that people have been thinking this for years and years. People thought last year would be the E3 we would see it. IGN was one of the biggest proponents of this idea. They even made a video, articles. But if you actually take a deeper look at their articles, they speculated, even in 2017, that they probably wouldn't see anything and that the game would most likely be released at E3 2018. Which would be kind of poetic. Borderlands 1 was announced 10 years ago in 2008 at E3. So announcing Borderlands 3 10 years later, 10 year anniversary could be really nice. I know. Other content creators like Morning Afterkill has a theory that maybe they'll announce it later next year as in March, which would be the 10 year release of Borderlands 1, and then part, like have some sort of remaster of Borderlands 1 with the release of Borderlands 3, then it would release in the fall. So there's a lot of ideas out there on when people think if it will coincide with release of Borderlands 1, announcement of Borderlands 1, if E3 will be important. Obviously, E3 hasn't always been a favorite for Gearbox. All they've shown at E3 really is early Borderlands 2 footage, early Borderlands 1 footage, and even the pre cell shaded trailer from Borderlands 1. But there's also GamesCon. PAX is probably one of the biggest. Gearbox is super loyal to PAX, so we could see it at one of their conventions. So if Gearbox does decide to go this route of announcement, there's 
a lot of options, a lot of places, and it's too hard to tell. Right now for E3 2018, Gearbox has only announced that their publishing company will be there, which means they'll be probably showing We Happy Few, games like that, Hello Neighbor, not too much of the Borderlands as of yet. I'll link another article from, from Mental Mars giving potential conferences and the IGN article from 2017, which includes the guests at Borderlands 3 at E3 2018 at the very end, if you want to check out any of those. Another just smaller story is that a new producer was hired. A new associate producer has been hired by Gearbox, most likely for Borderlands 3, although it's not confirmed. Mario Rodriguez, formerly of Tintertainment, announced that he has become a full-time employee at Gearbox Software. Although he has been working at Gearbox before this on an unannounced VR project just as freelance, which does make sense because at Tinkertainment they were responsible for a VR game, but before that he has helped other companies record and edit game trailers, help with art and logos, and so much more. Basically just that whole producer role, so he could have a bigger role at Gearbox that we haven't seen yet. A lot of fans, obviously, on his original tweet asked him if it was for Borderlands, but of course he didn't want to answer. So I'll link to his post announcing his employment down below, but most likely for Borderlands. If not, it's just cool seeing Gearbox still staffing up, because they still do have a lot of job openings, so nice to see them finding good people. Which actually kind of leads into my next story of playtesting which is Gearbox is asking for playtesters again. This has been going on for a while, but there was another recent push asking for individuals that live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for a paid playtesting internship that the total time for would be 10 days between April 3rd through the 13th and April 16th through the 20th, which was actually retweeted by Mario Rodriguez. So it's weird that he'd be retweeting playtesting for a game that's probably Borderlands, hopefully, fingers crossed. But this actually isn't the first time this year that Gearbox has asked for playtesters. Back in January, they were promoting playtester positions for February, although it was still not confirmed what the game would be. And I think reasonable people could find that it makes the most sense that it would actually be Borderlands. So if you live in that area, feel free to sign up and take advantage of this really cool opportunity. I'll link to the tweet from Gearbox if you want to apply, and a link to a video from Submado if you want to hear more thoughts on the playtesting, although his video was on the playtesting back in February, but for the most part the idea is the same if you just want to hear more in-depth topics and talks. So now we have to talk about why the game hasn't been announced. This next story isn't really anything new, but Randy Pitchford once again was explaining why Borderlands 3 hasn't been announced. The source is actually from Nerdvana Live, which is a talk show podcast type thing that he's been doing with different employees of Gearbox and just friends. Uh, we talked about an earlier one with Mikey Newman, who actually we think might be working on a trailer for Borderlands, but I'll link to that video if you guys want to hear all that, but this is about... Randy talking about why the game hasn't been announced. At around the 46 minute mark, he's of course asked a question about Borderlands 3 and why it hasn't been announced. He goes into how fast news works in this digital age, that once something is announced, people want it, and if you wait too long, people will forget and move on. He says that people are working on it, and that a lot of other ventures for the Borderlands franchise are in the works and that when they are ready, that we will get like a slew of news. He basically said there will be some lead time from announcement to release, but it will be way less than Borderlands 1, or even he said it will be shorter than a year. So hopefully we're thinking maybe a few months from announcement to release, which would be really nice. He also says that the game will be basically done by announcement, which is nice to hear, so hopefully almost perfectly polished by the time they announce it so they can do some playtesting and hopefully start working on the DLC, which I know people don't like to hear before the game is released or even announced, but it's nice to start thinking about that. But overall, if you just want to hear this Nerdvana podcast, which I'd highly recommend, 46 minute mark up through, he talks a lot about Borderlands 3, talks about the Switch, the future of it, a lot of great stuff right in there. So I'll link that down below. Another story we have to talk about is the big Borderlands 3 leak. 
So something else that's been recent news and that blew up is a Borderlands 3 leak for June 10. This started on Reddit and convinced a lot of people. Unfortunately, this was shortly proven to be fake. The alleged Vault Hunter shown on the side of the picture is a doctored character from a Dark Souls 2 trailer. There was also a trailer that went along with this screenshot. It says confidential property, do not distribute. The trailer itself shows a few different planets. Probably they were trying to show off that we aren't on Pandora anymore and that we'll be exploring the galaxy. And then this leaker allegedly gave some information. He said that it'd be the darkest game in the saga, same style of graphics as the previous game. In the image is the antagonist of the game. The first seconds of the reveal trailer of June 10. In this game, we'll visit other planets. It will be on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Reveal will be June 10, release date September 2018. It will be single player, co-op, multiplayer, and survival. There'll be a season pass with three expansions without an announced date. The main story will be 25 to 30 hours. Co-op and multiplayer is the same. Survival mode will be waves and waves of enemies like No Man's Sky, The Forest, and Subnautica. That the game will begin linear, but eventually we obtain a ship and travel to different planets in an open world. We'll go to main missions and a secondary mission, upgrade and personalize our ships, capture signals from space, discover, destroy ships, explore ancient ruins, and a lot of other things. And that the game also won't contain a battle royale mode. But as I've said before, a lot of this, the reason it sounds so great and believable is because it's a lot of things people already expect. We expect the same graphics. We saw the Unreal Engine trailer at the last E3. We expect a September release date because that's what Gearbox has always done. We expect co-op, we expect multiplayer, we expect a season pass. So a lot of this stuff is just what the people want and then just some fan fiction. We want to explore space so of course they're going to throw something in there about that. But it's obviously just a rumor. A lot of really big content creators spoke out on this which was really great like Gathalion, Morning After Kill, Mental Mars, Killer6. The one thing that this leak might get right though is that June 10 puts it very close to E3, which as I mentioned before, a lot of people assume we'll see some Borderlands 3 news. I don't want to get into too much speculation on this video. I will have a full video coming out later going over the full leak in detail, so be sure to stay subscribed and turn on the bell for that. I will mention that Mental Mars made a very helpful picture which shows how the Dark Souls character fits into the character used for this fake leak and it should help clear up any more confusion. So keep an eye out for my future thoughts and this video about the leak coming more explained. And the last story, which really isn't even a story, is just Twitter recapping characters. So the Borderlands Twitter is trying to be more active and has actually started a new series where they provide these character recaps for what I think are new players of the series. But the thing is that these videos have spoilers for the entire series, which might seem strange for thinking then who are these videos for if they spoil Borderlands 1, 2, and the pre-sequel. I like to think that they're going to keep making these up until the announcement of Borderlands 3, so players old and new can watch this, be caught up and ready for the next game, and remember where the characters came from. And it's also just a fun way to catch up and remember what happened for a lot of these games that you might have not played for months or even years. So far only Tina and Roland are out, so I'll link both of these down below if you guys want to check these out. They're fun, like and share them. Okay. So that's all the stories I had to cover. Obviously there was a lot in there. Not my full thoughts on everything. Some of these stories I'll be turning into smaller videos, going more in depth on my thoughts, what the news is. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me all your thoughts. Follow me on Twitter at HaterHype. And see you guys in the next one.